The coronation of King Charles III of the United Kingdom and his wife Queen Camilla will take place on the 6th of May 2023. While the coronation will be modernised to reflect the role of the monarch in today's society, it will also be steeped in royal tradition. The components of the coronation ceremony have remained practically unchanged since the 10th century, and all coronations since 1066 have been performed in Westminster Abbey. When a monarch died in the Middle Ages, their named heir was not automatically considered to be the new monarch until their coronation had been held. For this reason, coronations would be held quite soon after the death of the previous monarch, so that their named heir could be recognised as the new monarch. This changed in 1272 when King Henry III died. His heir was his son Edward and Edward was not in England at the time. Edward would return to England two years later and he was then crowned. So while coronations still remain important, it was decided that a new monarch's reign would begin from the moment their predecessor died. Even though King Edward VIII was never crowned, he was still considered monarch for a period of time, a role he assumed after his father, King George V, died. Nowadays, coronations are generally held off for an appropriate period of time so that mourning can occur and so that the coronation can be effectively planned. As you would expect, members of the king's immediate family as well as extended members of the royal family will attend the coronation. The king's younger son, Prince Harry, will attend, but his wife and children will not attend. Just 2,200 guests will also attend the coronation. This might seem like a lot of people, but in the 1953 coronation, 8,000 guests attended, many from the nobility with very few people from the Commonwealth. Many of the nobility today claim they are entitled to a seat in the coronation as their ancestors had also attended the coronations of past. A coronation claims office has been set up to decide which of the nobility will be allowed to attend the coronation. The Prime Minister, Cabinet Ministers, Governor General, Prime Ministers of the Commonwealth Realms and Overseas Territories representatives from other nations and from the King and Queen's charitable causes will attend the coronation. In the past, other monarchs from other nations were not allowed to attend a coronation, but Charles has invited a number of monarchs to attend the coronation. Several key people play important roles in the coronation. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, will conduct the coronation. The Dean of Westminster, David Hoyle, will assist the Archbishop. The great officers of state play a role in the organising of the coronation. These officers are the Lord High Steward, yet to be announced, Dominic Rabb, the Lord High Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, the Lord High Treasurer, Penny Mordaunt, the Lord President of the Council, Nicholas True, the Lord Privy Seal, Rupert Carrington, the Lord Chamberlain, and Edward Fitzalan Howard, the Earl Marshal. Some of these roles have remained vacant for centuries, and the remaining posts are appointed while others are inherited, like the role of Earl Marshal. The Duke of Norfolk is in charge of organising the coronation and this role has been passed to subsequent Dukes of Norfolk since 1672. The Lord High Constable and Lord High Admiral posts are currently vacant. The monarch and consort will be flanked on both sides by two bishops, the Bishop of Durham and the Bishop of Bath and Wells. In times past, the monarch and their consort would be surrounded by household members. Traditionally, the Queen's senior lady-in-waiting walked behind her and her robes were carried by the maids of honour, who walked beside the Queen. Queen Camilla has decided to scrap the ladies-in-waiting role. 
Instead, Camilla and Charles will each have four pages of honour. The king's eldest grandson, Prince George, will be a page of honour. Other heads of state will also attend, like the Emperor of Japan, the King of Spain, the King of the Netherlands, and the President of France. The King's procession will start at Buckingham Palace and end at Westminster Abbey. The King and Queen will ride in the Diamond Jubilee State Coach. This coronation will be the first to not use the Golden State Coach since 1831. The traditional outfit for a king was a crimson velvet surcoat over silk stockings and breeches. Under the left knee was the Order of the Garter. It has been reported that King Charles will wear the uniform of an admiral. The uniform will have to be unbuttoned during the service so the Archbishop can anoint the king's bare chest. Charles will also wear robe of state, the same worn to the opening of Parliament. The fabric doesn't stand up to the test of time, so a new robe has to be made for each monarch. Over the robe is a fur cape and the collar of the Order of the Garter. On his head will be the crimson cap of maintenance. This is made of velvet and fur. The Queen will most likely wear a dress made of white cloth with gold thread, as is traditional for a Queen. She will also most likely wear Queen Victoria's diamond coronation necklace and earrings. As the monarch enters without a crown, the consorts generally keep their head bare also. Consorts also wear a purple robe. All female members of the family traditionally wear white gowns with tiaras. Men and women with peerage titles wear crimson fur-lined robes with small coronets of their rank, which they will put on during the ceremony. Women's coronets are usually smaller to accommodate their tiaras. Royal children may also wear coronets, as was the case for Queen Elizabeth II and Princess Margaret, Countess of Snowdon, during their father's coronation. There are six parts to the coronation. The first part is the recognition. Once the King and Queen arrive at the Abbey, people will begin to sing. Pieces of regalia are brought in and placed on the high altar. The Queen then enters and people will cry out, Long live the Queen, in Latin. She will be seated to the side, as she doesn't take part in the ceremony until later. The King then enters to shouts of Long live the King, in Latin. He will sit on the chair of a state. The great officers of state surround the King. The Archbishop calls for the recognition of the monarch and the crowd responds, God save King Charles. This dates back to the Middle Ages when succession laws were not as straightforward and this basically symbolises the people accepting the rule of the monarch. The next part is the oath. The Archbishop asks the Sovereign to swear an oath to govern Britain according to the Constitution and to maintain the Church of England. He also signs the oath and the declaration of faith. He is then presented with a Bible. The third part is the anointing. The next part of the ceremony is the most sacred. The anointing with holy oil. The king will remove his robe and cape and move to the coronation chair, St. Edward's chair, which was created for King Edward I in 1296 when he stole the Stone of Schoon, which was used to crown kings of Scotland. It was returned in 1996 to Scotland, but will be brought back to London for Charles's coronation. A golden canopy will be held over the monarch's head by four knights of the Garter. The Dean of Westminster will pour consecrated oil into a spoon, which the Archbishop of Canterbury anoints the Sovereign in the form of a cross on his hands, head and heart. The spoon is the only part of the regalia to have survived the Civil War. 
The Archbishop then says a prayer and the canopy is removed. The fourth part of the ceremony is the investiture. The sovereign is dressed in a vestment similar to a bishop. First the Colombian Sedonis and then the gold supertunica are worn. Most of the regalia used today dates back to King Charles II when the monarchy was restored. The spurs are brushed against the monarch's heels. The archbishop then presents the sword of state. Other swords are also used in the coronation, including the sword of spiritual justice, the sword of temporal justice and the sword of mercy. They are not invested but are carried in the procession. The arm mills are then given to the monarch and a long stole is placed around the neck of the monarch, then the mantle. The monarch then carries the orb, the coronation ring and two scepters. The Archbishop will then bless St. Edward's crown, which is only used for coronations, and it is only used at the moment in which the monarch is crowned. St. Edward's crown is the most important part of the crown jewels. The original crown was destroyed during the Civil War and a replica was made for King Charles II. When the crown is placed on the sovereign's head, the crowd cries out, God save the king, three times and the peers will place their own coronets on their heads. The Archbishop will then read a prayer before the monarch. The fifth part of the ceremony is the enthronement. Nobles lift the king onto the throne located on a raised platform. The final part of the ceremony is the homage, where the Archbishop and bishops each approach the king to swear fealty. Then members of the royal family in order of rank remove their coronets to pay homage. After swearing their oath, they kiss the monarch's cheek and touch the crown. Then the senior members of each of the five ranks of nobility, barons, viscounts, earls, marquess and dukes pay homage. It has been reported that only the Archbishop of Canterbury and the Prince of Wales will pay homage due to time constraints. After this, the Queen will be crowned. Queen consorts traditionally kneel at an altar throughout the ceremony. The canopy will be brought in again for the anointing. The last consorts have each had a new crown made for themselves, but because of the cost, Queen Camilla has chosen to reuse Queen Mary's Art Deco style crown from 1911. This crown is highly controversial. It has the stolen Kohinoor diamond, which was stolen from an Indian monarch and given to Queen Victoria in 1849. Since then, the governments of India, Pakistan and Afghanistan have all requested that it be returned. The palace has decided they're not going to do this. Instead, they have decided that they won't use the diamond in the crown, but will use other diamonds from the collection, like the Cullinan 3, 4 and 5 diamonds. The consort's ring is then placed on her right hand, and she will hold two scepters. She will then sit on a throne to the right of the king, but slightly below the king. The king and queen will then kneel at a stool to take communion and a blessing. They then enter St. Edward's Chapel and St. Edward's Crown is laid on the high altar. The monarch changes into a purple surcoat and the imperial robes of state. They also wear the much lighter imperial state crown with the purple cap of maintenance underneath. He will also hold the scepter with the cross and the orb as everyone processes out of the abbey while God Save the King is sung. The king and queen will then make their way back to Buckingham Palace in a procession featuring members of the police, charities and marching bands. Once at the palace, the royal family will wave from the balcony and will witness the Royal Air Force fly by in the sky. There will likely be a private coronation banquet held at Buckingham Palace. Communities across the United Kingdom will also participate in the coronation big lunch and a concert will be performed at Windsor Castle the next day.